We're here at the Greenberg Family Conservation Area, one of Kestrel's many properties, and it's really a terrific place to kind of act as a counterbalance to everything that's going on today. And as you walk down to that trailhead and walk into the woods, it's just a different energetic place and a place to get away and really make a connection with everything that's still going on just as it does every spring and still thriving and still going through all the ecological changes here. So let's go see what we see down the trail. One of the things about looking at trees is you don't have to go very far before you see something fun to look at. And one of the many things to find here in, in this property are some beautiful tulip trees. You may not even be familiar with tulip trees, but here's a big one right behind us here. And one of the things you notice about tulip trees is they tend to have these very straight, stout trunks before the first branches are growing out as they've grown tall. And it's a little bit hard to tell at this angle or perhaps with a video, but there are the remnants of last spring's flowers up there and last summer's flowers which, believe it or not, are as big and as gorgeous as tulips. And they may not be reds and oranges, they're a little more subtle in color, uh, but that's where the trees get their name from. Tulip trees of this stature and this age have these thick uh, ridges and furrows, and you'll notice that they're intersecting. If you follow any single ridge down, it's going to bridge and connect with those next to it. They're a little bit flattened on the top. And you can not really make it out here, but on the younger versions of this species, you can see there's a whitish hue to the inside of the furrows here. So that's differentiated from the grayish or the darker ridge tops. Even when the cracks first start to develop in the younger bark of this species, the cracks are whitish. So that's something that carries right along. So here in spring, in early spring, we can see the telltale uh, residual leaves on a beech tree here that have lasted till the winter and probably won't come off until these buds start to bloom. And here we have these, these kind of golden brown, very long, slender, pointed buds. And one of the really cool things about these buds is that every leaf that's going to come out of the tip of this branch for this whole year is already contained within this bud. So last summer, every one of those leaves grew a miniature of what this mature leaf is going to look like, and they're all packed inside these buds. There's even a specific science just with all of the specific different ways that describe how buds can be folded and packed inside a bud, all these different scientific terms. And not only that, some of these on, on the older trees will contain flowers as well. And that will contain all of the leaves for the whole year. The leaves will grow longer, the, the stems will grow longer, but all of that is gonna burst out of this bud in the next coming month or two, or pretty soon. So when we're looking at these buds and we start to watch what blooms out of those buds in spring, we're not only experiencing what the growing conditions are now, we're, experiencing what the growing conditions were a year ago when those buds grew and were formed. So it really expands our concept of time and the scale of how we're looking at things. Every time we look at a tree, it's much more than just a snapshot in time. It's looking at things over a much wider range. One of the first things that really helps when you're looking at bark, and, and it's a big step, is to notice what's different because it can really just look like a blur of browns and grays when you first start to look at the trunks of trees. So here we have a tree that has this smooth, unbroken bark. And there are only a few species in this region that maintain that smooth bark as they get bigger. This being an American beech is one of them. But then we can see what happens in most trees when we come down the trail a little bit. So here we see a tree where the bark is starting to become broken with these vertical cracks. And this is a red maple. And we can kind of watch this happen and as these cracks start to develop, the bark is part of the protective mechanism of the tree. So behind it, a new layer of protective bark is already formed so that 
organisms and insects can't actually gain access to the living tissues of the tree. And here's the same species, and we can see as this process continues to happen, as the tree gets larger in diameter, this red maple is starting to have multi-layered bark, and it has these vertical strips of bark. So we can look at this succession. The beech, which we originally looked at, if that doesn't become diseased or, or somehow damaged, is going to maintain that smooth, unbroken bark for the life of the tree. So here we have a young black birch. It has this silvery gray bark. We can see these multiple horizontal lenticels, which are actually the, the breathing pores. They allow gas exchange through this protective outer bark with the living inner tissues. And if we had access to some of the twigs, we could actually break off a little twig and scrape a little bit of the bark and we'd get a really wonderful wintergreen smell. And we can see what happens to this as it gets older. There's an older species, same black birch. And what happens is that initial layer of bark with the horizontal lenticels, we can see just remnants of it here with these plates that are curling away from the trunk. And they tend to curl away in various degrees on this species. And then what's left behind it is a completely different incarnation of the bark. As we talked about earlier, there's always a protective layer underneath a layer that might be breaking apart. But here we have a completely different look, same species, just an older tree. So all the trails here in this, this um, parcel of land are, are blazed, and there's just a four different trails and a whole host of different things to see. We've just come a very short distance off of the main trail and we've mentioned some things and we've passed by a whole lot of other things that you could look at. So this place is open to get out as, as a respite from everything that's going on in the world right now and a lot of the tensions. And whether it's here or even if it's in another place where you can just get a little bit out in the woods and get out in nature, it's really a good place to find some energy, to let yourself down, and to do a little exploring.